Clark Montessori High School. Uh, this is my third year uh, as principal at Clark Montessori. Um, this is my 12th year in the district overall and uh, my 16th year overall of, uh, of administrative experience. Um, tonight, what we'll do is uh, we have a pretty comprehensive slideshow um, to share with you. And we do have several teachers on here as well uh, from our middle school to, uh, to help answer questions uh, that may come up. If you put them in the chat, uh, we can respond to them in the chat. Um, they will be monitoring that. And also, uh, if you do have some at the end that you want to unmute for and ask um, audibly, we can answer those as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started um, with, our, with our presentation. So overall, this is uh, <clears throat> this is our agenda. Well, next, we'll have a, a quick overview of the program. You'll see what the junior high experience looks like compared to the high school experience, what family involvement looks like, and then we'll have time at the end for questions and answers. Just want you to know that um, a few years ago, um, we, uh, we went through an accreditation process with the American Montessori Society um, along with Gamble. Uh, we did that as a, um, as a team effort, and we were um, both um, accredited by the American Montessori Society. Um, I, this is our, I believe this is our third year being accredited. It might be our fourth because I, it was uh, Principal Blaze's last year that we did get that accreditation. So um, next, please. So <clears throat> our, our, our vision for what we strive for at Clark every day um, is uh, we, uh, the priorities involve creating an environment that enhances the adolescent's ability to do these following four things, and that is uh, finding one's place in society. Understand the connection between finding one's place in society and the nobility of all types of work. Experience and learn the lessons of living in community and believe in the dignity of humans and that the world is a place of hope and progression of the human spirit. Um, and with our mission um, to fulfill the vision, our school seeks the highest and most complete academic environment for each student and to form a human community that nurtures an atmosphere of caring and sets a thoughtful social climate. Uh, we strive to be a community of adults and teenagers who respect each other's deepest personal and human qualities. And we strive to do this every day in everything that we do and all of our interactions with no matter who we connect with or interact with in the building. So our core values, um, and these are, are posted throughout the building and are reviewed constantly. And we always ask for examples of these five things, um, learning, respect, community, peace, and hard work. And we expect the students to uh, live up to these five uh, core values every day, and not just the students, but our staff and our families um, and all of our interactions uh, that we have within the circle. So the program advantage of why, why Montessori, um, you know, our program encourages the development of skills um, that, you know, our students are going to need in the future. Uh, I, you know, in my interactions with students, I tell them every day that you have to work now and set yourself up for things that you may not even know that were coming in the future. Uh, you know, when I was your age, you know, I'll tell them, that, that especially the seniors, that when I was 17, 18 years old, I never thought at my age now that I would be doing what I'm doing. So um, it's always, you always have to be looking ahead, um, being curious and creative. Um, 
Um, you know, we work with our hands, head, and heart. Um, leadership, teaming, collaboration. Um, you know, focus on personal and social responsibilities. And um, but there's a true commitment to living up to Clark's mission and vision, and the core values. Building why is is what makes us really special. Next one, Ms. Brooke. Oh, uh, we may have lost Ms. Brooke. Um, Principal Higgins, it's Krista. I'll follow up with her. In the meantime, Sheila or Tisha, do either of you have it up? I unfortunately do not have a copy of it. Okay, I have it up. I can, um, mm, 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 mm. uh-oh. Oh, here we go. It looks like we have been saved by Jean. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, everyone, for being patient with the technical difficulties. Right. Thank you, Ms. Jean. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Jean uh, is one of our um, is one of our five middle school teachers in uh, Community uh, 206, and uh, she's been with uh, Clark since the beginning. Um, I believe Ms. Jean was a student teacher the first year Clark was open and been there since. Um, and uh, she's been uh, instrumental and a huge, uh, huge supporter of the school and the community for all these years. Um, so our program, um, uh, school-wide, we have about 650 students. Uh, we have uh, college preparatory work at all levels. Um, we have an agricultural education program. We call it Ag Ed. So if you do hear that uh, short shortening of it, that is a program that we have in our ERG Kinder program. Uh, we do service learning and field experiments um, throughout all content at all grade levels. And there's an emphasis on social emotional needs of the adolescents. Um, that's in the classroom and also extra extra supports with um, TriHealth and Children's Hospital. Uh, the junior high experience, uh, we do, right now we are doing day, day trips, but we do have overnight experiences as well. Um, and those overnight experiences are uh, typically fall camp, uh, leadership camp for seventh graders in the spring, and Andros, which uh, will come a little later. Um, in the presentation, but we do have two year academic cycles uh, with community, uh, the, the focus on, uh, on different themes. So uh, we will share those a little later as well. Uh, all of our high school classes are honors, double uh, A classes. We do have fall and spring intercessions um, in their community based in the fall and their interest based in the spring. And then our seniors do do a year long uh, service uh, service project, uh, senior project. So what's a community at Clark? Uh, we have uh, we have five junior high communities. They, uh, they consist of a math and science teacher, language arts, social studies. We have an intervention specialist and we have one community paraprofessional um, so we have typically four adults working with approximately 55 students. Um, that's a combined group of seventh and eighth graders that will stay with the same teachers for two years. Um, 
Uh, we do rely on our um, our eighth graders to be the the leaders of the community and help the youngers um, in in learning how to be an eighth grader for the youngers to, for the following year. So field experiences, you know, they're they're different from what we have, um, you know, regular field trips. Um, these are hands-on um, experiences that uh, that take place outside a traditional classroom. Uh, they're connected to standards, um, work on community building and real world skill building, and rooted in the Montessori belief that students learn best by doing instead of just reading it out of a book. Um, so, and participation is, uh, is required. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, why do we have to do this? Do we really need to do this? And the answer is yes. It is part of our curriculum and part of our program that you do fully participate in these, uh, these different field experiences. Um, and there's different costs and, and how do you pay? Uh, we do uh, notify parents of what the, the cycle fees are and um, in the summer. And that way you can, um, and there are several different ways that you can pay. So a two year cycle loop. So year A, you know, if you go in, in uh, you're a seventh grader, year A, you are going to fall camp, doing 36 hours of community service. You're gonna to go to the art museum, climb time where we do uh, rock climbing, uh, the zoo the observatory. And then if you're a seventh grader, you're gonna to go to uh, leadership camp, which is a Camp Campbell Guard. Um, if you're an eighth grader, you will go to Andros um, Island, which is in um, the Bahamas. Uh, three years ago, I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to take that trip and um, it is a great experience. Um, so year B, the next year as an eighth grader, you would go to fall camp, you do community service, but you go to the Freedom Center, you go skiing uh, to learn about force and motion. We don't go skiing at Perfect North just to be out there having fun with the kids. We actually are learning um, about force and motion and friction and different things that um, um, uh, in science. Uh, we do a neighborhood field study uh, where we learn about the different neighborhoods um, you know, what makes the East neighborhood unique throughout the city. And we do go to observatory again, and then uh, leadership camp or Andrews. So <clears throat> fall camp is usually September um, and it's uh, tent camping. Um, there are no, no cabins, no, um, you know, they don't shower every day. It's a, um, it's a rustic, cook meals, um, clean up their own mess uh, type camping. Uh, leadership camp is in the spring. Um, in April, May, we go to Camp Campbell Guard, the seventh graders uh, all get together and learn how to be leaders for the next group, uh, for the next year, for the group of seventh graders that are coming in. Then the eighth graders in May um, go to Andros Island in the Bahamas uh, for a week long experience um, at that Marine Biology Center at Four Far. So again, for fall camp, like I said, it's tent camping, four days and three nights, leave on a Tuesday morning, come back on a Friday afternoon. Um, just so you know, ahead of time you get one shower and that was the day that you get to go canoeing. And um, so, um, it's, um, it's truly, really rustic, um, where you learn outdoor leadership skills. Um, there's a lot of community building and group initiatives, um, service learning, and there are academic lessons, um, and you get to observe wildlife um, out there really in nature, and not just read about it or watch a video. The leadership camp is three days and two nights. Um, these, these are in cabins. Uh, where the meals are provided. Students don't have to cook and clean up after themselves by way of um, preparing meals, but work on community building and a service learning again, where um, there are different activities that we do to build those leadership skills.
So Andrews, um, like I said, it's a marine biology trip. Um, the students, um, you know, they prep ahead of time for this trip, learning how, some students are learning how to swim for the first time. Uh, some students are, um, and we practice at Walnut Hill Swimming Pool. Um, the students, um, they snorkel. Um, you know, they snorkel. Uh, we were at 15, 18 feet of water. We do wear BCs. You know, we do practice safety um, while we're out in the water. But, um, you know, you're able to see all the way down. And it's really uh, a wonderful experience. We do different labs, hands-on activities. Um, we learn about the culture. Um, and then the academic lessons and the students are really, um, it's not a, a vacation by any means because we're up uh, 10, 30, 11 at night doing, uh, doing journal work. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great end. And the ceremony at the end of the experience is great. I don't want to spoil that. So um, there, is a, there is a climax to this trip. So um, that was a, that's a once in a lifetime experience that uh, students talk about even after they graduate and, um, and years after they graduate about how much that trip meant to them. So um, again, so okay, here are some of the costs that we have. Uh, seventh grade, uh, it's going to cost between camps and the different um, the different field experiences. It could cost about four hundred fifty dollars. Uh, eighth grade year, um, it could cost a little less, uh, about two hundred fifty dollars, because you don't have the the fall camp the i'm sorry the leadership camp in there but that doesn't take into account the andros trip which is roughly two thousand dollars so uh, the approximate total for middle school was about twenty seven hundred dollars and uh, we do um, you'll see here a little later we do offer opportunities to help uh, students and families cover those costs um, with different scholarship opportunities and fundraising uh, just this past sunday um, I was at um, I was at the Bengals game working concessions for a foundation um, last year to help raise money for the school. I did seven of the eight games. The only game I didn't do uh, was a Steeler game because I wasn't wanting to work during that game because I'm a huge fan um, and um, I, I did not want to work the Bengals game because uh, I wanted to watch that game. So, uh, but I was down there this Sunday. Um, and it's opportunity for 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 moms, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandparents. We even had grandparents there this evening. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, last Sunday, helping raise money for that. We do have pie sales at Thanksgiving, butter braid in the spring, and we do um, do buddy cards as well. So um, we do have scholarships through uh, our Clark Foundation, which is a parent group who who sponsors different events throughout the year to help raise money um, for us. Um, and your, your contributions and your help in sponsoring foundation and helping volunteer for foundation um, would be great and uh, would not go unnoticed because we need all the help and support that we can get to help raise funds for our, our students and families. So the high school experience, we do have two teams in um, ninth grade. Uh, we have a 9-10 Erie team, um, and that's a 9-10 Erie team because they are uh, closer to Erie Avenue. Uh, if you've ever been in a building, this has two wings. The 9-10 Woods team is in the back side of the building, closer to the woods, uh, the reason for their names. Um, our 11th grade and 12th grade communities are 11 Erie and 11 and 12 Woods. But next year is going to be 11 Woods and 12 Erie because they loop as well. So um, our 11th and 12th grade teams, um, they stay in the same same, uh, same wing of the building. And so um, they, uh, they loop with their teachers as well. Uh, so, uh, so there is a, you have a math teacher, science teacher, social studies teacher, and language arts. You know, we do have two intervention specialists that make up that that community as well, and um, 
We have about 125 students in each 910 community, and we have about 180 students in both 11, 12 communities combined. So in the fall, um, uh, classes, we do have intercessions in the fall that typically takes place between first and second quarter. Um, we work to build community. And um, so what freshmen do, they learn what it means to be in high school. We talk about ACTs, GPAs, credits, graduation requirements. Sophomores, they usually do community service and that's all over the city. Where our juniors are starting to explore college and um, careers and our 12th graders are um, typically doing um, um, job shadowing in a, in a career in, uh, that interests them. In the spring, we, um, we typically do it between third and fourth quarter. Well, the two weeks before spring break. And this is um, uh, teacher design courses that they're interested in and um, there are opportunities in the city. There's opportunities outside of the city. On the right, you can see a list of, of all of just some of the things that we do offer by way of um, spring opportunities. Uh, one of the most unique opportunities we had was literally two days before we were going to leave. I had to go tell a group of students that we were not going to go to the Philippines because uh, COVID was just starting to hit and and it was um, not going to be safe for our students to go. They didn't have to go, job. We were going to go for uh, 16 or 17 days. Uh, we were going to be in, uh, in the Philippines uh, learning about the culture. Um, so that one did not make the list, but um, we, we do offer a variety of different experiences, in-town experiences and out-of-town experiences for our students. Ms. Jean. So we go to the next one, Ms. Jean. This this one is uh, we do community service. Uh, so just wanted to let you know we do um, get back to the community, and each year it's um, uh, 50 hours of community service for high school students. Uh, we do have extracurriculars and athletics. Um, those that are listed there. Uh, we do have. Um, girls lacrosse um, on, um, as a sport as well. And, um, and we have tons of different um, extracurriculars. Um, we do have um, uh, more. Uh, we have girls to women. Uh, we have other um, groups and clubs that do meet as well, art club. Um, so we do uh, offer a wide variety of different things for students to be involved in after school about 60% of our students are involved in some type of activity. And many of our students, I mean, athletics, mind you, uh, a vast majority of those students are involved in two or more sports. So um, there are tons of things for people to, um, to be involved with. So just school and community things. Um, Epic performances, those are plays uh, that are put on by high school students that are sponsored by uh, one of our fine uh, Montessori IAs in our building. Um, uh, senior project night, uh, we held last year out on the field where all the projects were lined up on the outside of the fence. And, um, and it was just a real nice gallery walk outside. Um, so um, Again, we, we do a lot of different things to invite the community into our building to uh, see what our students are doing. So there's a lot for you um, as because there's a lot for us. There's a lot for the student. So there's uh, the family piece as well. Uh, we ask for support in all their academics and field experiences and community service and the fundraising, um, you know, monitoring grades, establishing communication with 
uh, teachers, um, participating in student-led conferences, which the students um, uh, do do take charge of and do um, uh, do a very nice job with explaining where they are to their parents. Um, um, you know, just volunteer for different special events or chaperone or different field experiences and, um, you know, participate in foundation, our instructional leadership team, that's ILT, uh, our local school decision-making committee, which is our LSDMC, um, oversees the, the huge um, programmatic changes in the building and uh, some review data, um, uh, approve our budgets and different things like that. So, um, and athletic boosters, tons of ways for parents to be involved or families to be involved. Again, it's, um, it takes all three of us uh, to work together to, um, to be a team and um, everybody could participate in a way uh, to help keep the wheels turning and make us be the best that we can be. I do have several teachers on the call. Um, I did not see a lot of questions pop up in the chat. So um, if you do have questions, um, you can um, you can ask. Um, I can only see a limited number of people right now because of the, the presenting. So um, I can't tell if you raise your hand or not. So if you want to come on mute and you know just say who you are, what your question is. Uh, one of our one of our teachers will help answer your questions for you. Uh, my name's Amber, and I was just wondering if the, the list pricing, did that, like, include sports, or did I miss out on that? I know I was doing some other things. There there are sports. Um, um, any What sport are you – or is there one in particular that you're looking for? Um, no, not one in particular. I just was wondering if that was included in the list because my son um, – I just didn't know if the sports pay or, you know, how much those are, if we can find that information on the website, because he is interested in starting sports. So I'm uh -huh. just wondering. Okay. Um, you were breaking up a little bit. Um, we are starting sports. Did you say something about is there a cost to pay, to play? Yes, that's what I asked. Is there a cost? Okay. Um <clears throat> Right now, there is there is not a cost to play. Um, in years in, now, years past, there was a, a, a minimal fee, uh, but there is not a, a, a cost to play right now. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome, um, Lillian Pierce has a hand raised. Hi, we had a question about um, if, if we apply for the lottery for Clark, um, are we still, is it still a possibility to get data or gamble in that since we're on the east side? Or did they change anything with the lottery? Hi, Principal Ron, Higgins. I it's was just ready to defer to Ms. <laughs> Leslie Bryan. <laughs> Hi there. Thanks for such a great, great question. So there is an opportunity for families of sixth grade in district Montessori children attending a CPS Montessori elementary school. Again, in district grade six attending a CPS Montessori to apply starting on Tuesday in our early Montessori application. So if you're interested in getting into, um, well, you'll have priority to get into Clark because you shared that you live east. If you live west, you'll have priority to get into Gamble. Okay. There, the, the general high school lottery, which is where you would apply for Dater or Hughes or Withrow or Woodward, any of our other um, high schools, you would apply during that lottery for a seat there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, no problem. So Tuesday, can we still do paper applications or does it have to be online? Because I had a lot of issues with the Blue Jean app. So if you're asking a question about the 
CPS High School, the early Montessori application. It's available, it will be available on Tuesday. A hard copy so you can grab one from the school or from customer care. You can also go to our website and print a, a copy there and fill it out, turn it in. You can also email it to us. That information is on the application. And you can also, if you decide that none of those work for you, you can also submit a Google form. I'm sorry, I was having a hard time hearing you. So there are a few different ways that you can submit the application. If you'd like to do a paper copy, you can. If you'd like to do an online version, it's a Google form and you'll be able to submit that online. All of that information is currently on our CPS website. The application is not live yet, but what I'll do is I'll put the link in the chat so that way you have that. I appreciate it because when I was trying to use the app yesterday, to the other day to get into them, it just wasn't working. So that's why I was a little apprehensive about an online application and then end up missing it because my son's been in Montessori from K through six and I don't want to miss, you know what I'm saying? Miss his opportunity. Right. So the application it itself is not live. The information is there, but the application will not go live until Tuesday, right around 9 a.m. So you would see like a little link there but it will not go live, but all the information and presentation, um, some, some other information is out there on the web. And again, this is uh, for our students who reside in district who are currently in a CPS grade six Montessori school. My son is, he's been at the same school for six years. He's been at uh, Parker Woods, so. Thank you I for choosing CPS, thanks so much. All righty, Principal Higgins, back to you. I'm going to hit mute again. <laughs> All right. Um, Shad, um, I, I just saw this pop up. There may be something I missed before this, but something popped up about shadowing. There will be some tours coming up in October. Those will go live on our website at 6 o'clock. Um, they are limited to 15 students per tour and there are only I believe three listed I believe um yes yeah, so it'll go live at 6 p.m um and it's in the chat how to get there any any other burning questions right now? I mean, I, I mean, we're a little past a half hour. So, um, I mean, we're here. Like I said, I have several middle school teachers here too. Uh, if you have any specific questions for them, Mr. Higgins, while yeah. while we're waiting for some questions, is it okay if I jump in for a second? Yes, go ahead, Miss G. Okay. Well. Maybe I have a little sun today. Um, I was able to take my students out of the building and it's been a little while, but um, Mr. Higgins stopped out and our community was able to go to camp today. We're just doing day trips right now, but I'm telling you that it was really a powerful experience to have the seventh and eighth graders come together and have fun and they're learning about leadership and building community and working together and it was a great day. I have kids like climbing high ropes and being proud of themselves and working hard in their written work to say, how are they connecting this experience to things that we're learning in school? And anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of riding high because we had just such an amazing day and I wanted to let you know, so thank you. Hi, this is Christine. I'll ask a question. Um, you mentioned that all of the high school classes were the AA courses, the honors courses. Do those then go into APs and do you have a whole variety of AP oh. courses that they, they can take? Yes, we okay. We do. We do offer AP classes as well. Uh, some of our AP classes, <clears throat> because of the number of students that we have, 
Um, and I have to go back through the chat too, because there was another question similar to this. Um, we don't offer every AP class every year, uh, depending on the year. Uh, we don't offer, um, like we won't offer AP bio every year. We, we typically do offer like AP psychology every year, just because of the number of students who want to take that class. Uh, is typically a lot larger. Uh, some of our other courses, uh, the U.S. history, um, we don't offer every year just because of the low numbers of students who want to take it. But every course, if you're a student who wants to take an AP course, you can you have the opportunity to take every AP course that you want to take at some point uh, in your high in high school. Um, we have um, language and composition uh, one year, then the next year it's a, it's a literature class. So those kind of classes rotate and we don't, like I said, don't offer every class every year. Um, but we do offer a variety of AP classes. Hi, maybe uh, this is Dr. Blaze. Maybe I could jump in from the uh, Department of Teaching and Learning and also um, someone who was um, both principal and a teacher of AP classes at Clark. So um, families, welcome. We're so glad you're here tonight and learning about Clark for your little sixth graders. They're gonna be fully grown before you know it. Um, along with what Mr. Higgins said, we do alternate those things at both Clark and Gamble, um, but we have had success in the past with students um, either self-studying or getting tutoring from one of their teachers to take AP courses that might not even be on the books. And also we've made huge growth in our uh, CCP, so College Credit Plus and AP online courses through the district. So we're really building out so that any student, as Mr. Higgins said, who has an interest can have access to that teaching and learning. And that's something that we are building out district-wide. So thank you for that question. We really appreciate, uh, appreciate that and your big dreams for your kids. Thank you. Um, there's a question in here about uh, the biggest difference between Walnut and Clark. Um, um, what's the biggest difference between the Walnut and Clark or the junior high communities or blend in seventh and eighth grade classrooms? Um, one of the difference, the one of the biggest differences between Walnut and Clark is, uh, and I talk with John all the time, uh, Chambers principal there. Uh, is the pace. Uh, they move at a much faster pace. Um, they, they cover a, a whole lot more material. Uh, they do study Latin uh, in middle school, and they, um, we do not. Um, uh, we do a lot of group work. We do a lot of individual work. We do hands-on work, uh, where Walnut does not. Um, traditional you know, 50 minute bell. This is what you get from your teacher. This is your homework and you go and um, to the next class. And, um, and, and one of the things that we just talked about earlier this year uh, was the pace. So uh, I would say that was probably one of the biggest differences between Walnut and Clark in middle school, along with the language of having to do the Latin. Um, and they don't have the field experiences that we have. Uh, what are, what percentage of starting student population graduate 12th grade? That is a great question. Um, um, starting seventh grade, how many of those actually graduate? Uh, uh, starting class of uh, about 130 uh, seventh graders, we usually, uh, we typically graduate about 85 seniors. Um, 
we typically graduate about 85. And of those, um, of those students, what percentage goes on to college? Um, a vast majority of them do go on to college. Um, I, I think two years ago, our, our valedictorian of the class uh, opted to take a year off because of COVID and um, decided not to go to college because they wanted to do other things. And so not all of our students do go to college, but they do go to a trade school. Uh, some do go to the military um, because college isn't what they want to do. So uh, we do have people that go to the police academy and firefighter academy as well. So uh, we have people do, uh, our students do a wide variety of different things. And that's one of the things with Montessori is that not all, all of them are, are, are wanting to go to college, but all of them want to do great things out in the world. Principal Higgins, I yeah. can help with that. Um, so students identify a pathway uh, for post-secondary career or engagement. And this past year, uh, we had at Clark specifically 81% of graduating seniors identified that they were intending to enroll in a university or college. We do know, however, not every student always does, but at least we have that um, metrics to identify with our student bodies intent to go to college, which I think is a great, a great number. One of the things though for us um, that's important about our students about graduating all of our kids graduate. Um, we, we, if you, if you make it to your senior year and you get to the end of May, then you graduate with your class. Um, that's, um, that's, that's something that we're proud of that, you know, our students do stick it out and they do make it, they do graduate. They do get the state uh, test points. They do get the GPA. They do, um, um, get all the, the community service, they get their, uh, they do their senior project, they get all the state uh, required classes that they have to take. And, you know, uh, you, if you look at our report card, it may say, you say all your kids graduate, but your state report card says you're only 94% or 96% uh, graduation rate. Uh, that's because uh, students with special needs do have the opportunity to defer their diploma and go to a special program um, like ICANN or Project Search where wow. they can learn different skills to help them be more successful in life. And, and so they get to defer their diploma. And unfortunately for us, um, that's great for the, for the students and it's great that they get to learn another year. Um, it counts as a, as a dropout for us. And so you won't see 100% attendance, but the students who are spend their senior year with us do graduate. One thing I noticed also um, about uh, the difference in Montessori is the diversity. If parents are looking for that, I feel like it's a lot more diversity. Um, and then just from my son being in, in Montessori for six years, I've learned that he's happier because he's independent. And I don't think schools outside of Montessori can give that. I mean, like, I don't I know you guys have said thank you, but I don't think you realize how good you guys do with our kids. Um, and as a parent, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate CPS. I appreciate his teachers because I really feel like he was set up for success outside of just education like just to be a successful person, you know, and I appreciate that. Do any of the teachers want to share some of their um, experiences with students or um, any other parents have um, things that they have experienced in their own work uh, at Clark or their parenting at Clark?
we have any more questions specific to Clark and what we do every day. I don't have a question, but I did just want to say, that, I mean, the presentation was pretty thorough. It looks a lot more exciting than when I went to middle school, junior high. And I really do um, appreciate the opportunity that we're given through CPS and the fact, just like um, I think Amber said that now we're also guaranteed a spot in here. So thank yeah. you for everybody who worked for that. Well, thank hey, Mr. You. Higgins. Yes. Can I give you guys uh, a chance to brag? Just each teacher say one point of pride uh, of the school, and then maybe parents can hear something that resonates with them. Just something that you think makes Clark special. Then what I'll do, uh, Mr. Corey, is I will start, um, and I will say every time anybody asks a question like this, I will say it's the staff. I mean, they are absolutely amazing uh, through all of the, even before, um, and then even especially through all the COVID stuff, uh, all the last minute meetings and the changes and the, uh, the difficulties that, you know, we had, um, you know, they never gave up and they always kept fighting. They always wanted what was best for the students and willing to put in the time to make the experience as best it could be for everyone involved. Uh, the students, the parents, and all the families. Um, I will say, um, I will brag on the staff. I wouldn't, and I, I wouldn't work anywhere else. And they are absolutely amazing. And uh, I know there's some other principals on here, but uh, I will go to bat and brag on the best staff in the district. I can jump in as one of the uh, math and science teachers in the junior high. Uh, the, the field studies are really, um, they're absolutely incredible. I mean, we go, our, our fall camp experience that we go on right in the beginning of the year. Um, I know our community, my community specifically, we like to go, you know, eight days into the school year. We want to go tent camping right away. Um, that's where we get to learn about each other. That's where we get to know about each other. We're setting up, uh, setting up tents. We're making our own meals. We're canoeing. We're writing poems. We're, I mean, we're doing everything out there and it is, it is just a truly unique time. It's, it's like nothing else to be out there, um, and really learn about each other and grow and build a uh, community. And then when you come back into the classroom, all that translates and you're just a different a different group of people and and the learning that you do in the classroom is so much stronger because of that bond that you built uh outside i'll jump in oh, oh okay sorry i i really could go on but i said something before but i'll you want to see if Clark is good for your kid, right? You want to see if this is a good fit. And so if you have been in Montessori and want to continue, I mean, that is what you want to find out. Because at this level, we're looking more outside. We're going on field studies. We're looking at how these young people are growing into adults. And I think that is like my favorite. We get a chance, like a front row seat to this, of how kids are asking the big questions, supporting each other. I mean, we have great teachers that can teach all the stuff, but all the stuff doesn't really matter unless you have like a good connection. You know, I think that when you have that relationship that kids that are great at stuff or maybe not great at stuff, they're buying in because people care about them and know that we want what's best like we want them to be challenged and encouraged and feel great about school and be successful be ready for the next level and so i mean i could keep going because there's so many cool things that we get a chance to do but sorry dean i'll just jump in i definitely agree that montessori gives you that chance that like just classes like simple classes can't teach you and um like you guys do really really good at cps 
like getting our kids involved. Like I'll never forget kindergarten when they were like, no, you can't go with him. It, he, we want him to be independent. We want him to, you know, I feel like that's what sets him up for college and getting ready to do syllabus is, is those contracts. You know what I mean? And I just feel like other schools couldn't compete with the Montessori experience. You guys are amazing. Just from a district perspective and also, frankly, a global perspective, Cincinnati Public Schools is known as being the largest um, system of public Montessori's and really Montessori's anywhere on the planet. And Clark and Gamble share a design that, frankly, was created by uh, um, sixth graders and the parents of Montessori students. They wanted to keep it going. They designed a secondary system to meet the needs of kids where they are in their development in their seventh and eighth grade. I call it the knucklehead years. Continue it on into those ninth and 10th grade, like starting to make you proud years and 11th and 12th grade, just blowing you away years. And so um, just, I'm so proud to be able to be part of the whole Cincinnati Public School Montessori system. The high schools would not be as amazing without the Montessori elementary schools the families, the students, the sixth graders who come up ready to shine, and of course, um, the support that we really do get day in and day out from this whole community. And there are thousands and thousands of CPS Montessori students living in Cincinnati. It is just a really unique part of our cultural fabric, and Clark and Gamble are both really ready to meet you there. So we don't have any representatives from Gamble other than myself tonight. What I will say is, as Mr. Higgins mentioned, that um, they went through accreditation together. So from if you are from the American Montessori Society, Clark, Clark and Gamble are actually one program. The teachers collaborated to create those um, standards-based Montessori learning experiences. We are in continual communication. We often share teachers. The teachers are trained together. There are some minor differences. There might be some languages that are offered, I think French at Clark and Korean at um, Gamble, but at its core, they share a mission, they share a vision, they share all of their um, fundamental ways of being and their um, courses and their trainings. Um, they just happen to be on different sides of town, which in Cincinnati is no small thing, as we know. So um, anyway, I'm here to help with all that and the consistency among um, the schools. So I just wanted to end with that piece and see if there are any more commentaries from anybody about that. So thanks for that prompt, Jack. There is a raised hand from Allison Ogilvy. Hi, um, so I work at PRM. Um, my daughter Charlotte is getting ready to um, move up into the seventh grade. And I was curious, I didn't go to CPS um, growing up. How does it work with um, transportation? Like would I have to find transportation because PRM is an early school. So, um, and her father actually works at Gamble Montessori. Um, so just curious how transportation works. Hi there, I um, am back. It's me, Ms. Bryant. So although I do not manage the transportation department, I wanted to assure everyone on the call, when a student is registered and then enrolled at a CPS school, that information is imported into the transportation department database. And based on the mileage from the school <clears throat> and the home, that determination of eligibility happens at that time. For very specific questions, you can call or email uh, the transportation department, and I'll be happy to put that information in chat also. That's a good question. And remember that new this year, this upcoming year for 22-23, students who reside east of I-75 have priority into Clark, and students who reside west will have priority into Gamble. And we recognize that there could be a family that's from going on one side of town to the other, and those are looked at on a case-by-case -case basis, okay? Thank you. Do we have any any last minute questions tonight? 
Um, checking the time, it's about five minutes till six. Um, so, um, yes. so um, yeah. my name is Don. I have a question. So mm -hmm. I was unable to get access to the Google Meet, so I had to use the phone. And for the presentation and everything that you're saying that you're inserting into the chat, for those parents who aren't able to access that, how can we get that information? What I can do is uh, I can share this with the uh, three principals, and they can get it out to their uh, to their pers uh, prospective families. And Principal Higgins, we're also recording this meeting that has the presentation, and we will send it out to the distribution, the folks who are invited as well. Okay. I can also put it on your website as well. So if people missed it, they can find it on, on your website. We have any other questions tonight? Okay. Um, I do uh, appreciate everybody's time this evening. And um, I, I want to say thank you uh, for, for coming out. I hope you uh, got some useful information that will help you make a decision for your, for your family and your child's future. Um, and, you know, we always hope that uh, Clark is your number one choice. Uh, we know that there are some other great choices out there as well, but we, we, we tend to think that we're the best choice. And uh, we always, uh, always want to convey that, and we always want to be uh, the one who uh, gets the, the, the family. So, um, you know, sometimes we lose out to a Walnut or SCPA, but, um, you know, families, um, we, we hope you, you did get something out of this presentation that will help uh, steer your decision our way. So um, thank you for coming out tonight. And uh, if you do have any questions, um, you, can ask, uh, you can ask at school. Or if you can't email me, uh, that is an option for you as well. Uh, my email is on the district website. So uh, on the school website. I'm sorry, it's on the school website. So uh, you can't email me specific questions and I will get back to you. Thank you for coming out tonight and uh, we hope to see you all here uh, in the fall at uh, different orientation nights. Thank you, everybody.